So what it comes down to is you have to know how to do cross product using component notation. And I think the questions we are asking in this homework set, you don't necessarily have to do the full uh, version, but I think being aware of the full version helps you. So uh, let me, yeah, so let me start here. Uh, it says a particle of mass, some mass, has some position vector r at a particular instant of time when its velocity is um, some value with respect to the origin. So um, let me just draw some figures so that I have something to visualize because you're going to see algebraic formulas and um, we do need something to visually anchor it. So the particle is going to be in the in the quadrant of four because it has positive x and negative y. It's somewhere over here, uh, somewhere over here, and it has positive x velocity. So it's moving in that direction with the speed of v. And this is my r. All right. Um, so what you need to know is the formula for angular momentum to start, which is the, the, the full formula for angular momentum, the definition of angular momentum, which is that the definition of angular momentum is the displacement, it's that exact R mathematically, cross product with the momentum. And you've seen this cross product in different ways. And the, the formula that I actually prefer is, and I even call it a physics definition of cross product, is the one that's based on relative angles and magnitudes. One that says the magnitude of this whole thing is equal to the magnitude of R times magnitude of P times sine theta, where theta is the angle between them. Um, that's the usual definition that we prefer. Now, applying this in this context will be tricky because for one, you're not given this uh, angle between these two things, or I guess more precisely, this angle here. You're not given that angle. If you wanna work it out, it's gonna be cumbersome. So really what you need to use here is the component definition of the cross product. And um, I think I have a lecture video showing it, but uh, let me just do a quick version here so that I can show you how I memorize this. Um, so the easiest way to memorize the component version of the cross product formula is um, to memorize it as a, as a determinant of a three by three matrix. And this a three by three matrix is formed in this way. The, uh, so the three by three matrix that you use to memorize, um, memorize the component definition of uh, cross product. Uh, the first, is, so you build it row by row. The first row has the unit vectors, x hat, y hat, t hat. The second row, and the order matters here, it has first of the two vectors. In this case, it's r. So I have x component of r, y component of r, C component of R. And the, the last row is the second vector. So I have X component of momentum, Y component of momentum, and C component of momentum. So, so that's the matrix that once you've built it, that'll help you memorize the component um, definition of cross product. Because the way I memorize it is this L here, it's the, uh, is the determinant, I mean, in the algebraic sense of this uh, three by three matrix. And if you remember your linear algebra or college algebra, I forget when you cover this, um, there's a kind of a mnemonic device for memorizing determinant. It only works for three by three matrix and it goes this way. You kind of write two extra columns or you copy over these first two columns so that you have x hat, rx, um, px, you have y hat, 
RY, PY. And the way you memorize it is um, you can kind of build this uh, word puzzle. You can build this diagonal combinations. Diagonal here. Um, and so there's you know, three diagonal combinations. And these um, ones that go diagonally downward to the right, they are associated, so they get multiplied together and you associate positive sign with them. And these other ones, let me use purple, that goes diagonally to the left or you know, downward to the left. You also have three combinations here. They get a negative sign associated with them. So you have this whole complicated <laughs> product you are building. So let me, as I'm building it, let me collect it by like terms. Let me collect it by terms that contain the same unit vector. So I know they go into the same component of this um, L um, vector. So L of X is going to come out of these two combinations, R plus RY PG, RY, PZ minus this combination here, RG, PY, RG, PY. And you know, there are other kind of um, other patterns you can pick out here, uh, cyclical, anti-cyclical permutation. Let me not get into that. I'm just gonna use this mnemonic device to remember and write, can remember and write down the formula. Um, can I just, uh, Hard to just get the highlight. Um, so let me do the Y component. You'll just have to follow it with your eyes. Uh, so, you know, Y component, it's these two. Follow it with your eyes, <laughs> not my highlighter. So the Y component of the angular momentum is um, RG uh, PX, that's the uh, positive part, minus the um, RX PG. And finally, the G component of angular momentum is gonna be, um, let's see, so I'm looking at this and, oh, I guess that actually contains both. So the positive one is one that's going to the right downward. So Rx, Py minus Ry, Px. Okay, so that's the full formula. And if you needed to find um, angular momentum in arbitrary direction, that's how you to do it. <clears throat> now for these homework questions, you will see that the, the, pro, the I guess, I don't know what the term is, product, no. The, the things that you are multiplying, they'll be given in such a way that uh, ang the product is in a kind of uh, one of the three um, axis directions. You can kind of see, you know, imagine plugging in these numbers and you will see that each of these end up just being zero because um, the momentum has no G component, so that's zero. Position has no G component, so that's again zero. Same thing in the Y component here. These, non, uh, these zero G components make this whole thing zero. So really the only non-zero component you have to deal with is this one. So you just uh, plug in the numbers here. Um, plug in a number, you have the X component, you have the, uh, oh, momentum doesn't have Y component. Okay, that makes it simpler. So this part is gone. So you have the Y component of momentum. Remember both minus signs, which will cancel out, you know, I guess which will cancel out. Um, so it's gonna be four times um, momentum. So that's gonna be um, three, so mass times velocity, so six kilograms times the three meters per second. Oh, I think I can do that in my head. Uh, I don't know, can I? 72, I think. 72 kilogram meters squared per second. Let's see uh, if that's what we get. 72, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. And you will see that when you look at the options. Oh, yes, and it could, there could have been a lot more options. And um, it's gonna be positive G. And you can actually see that it also matches with the right hand rule in that uh, if you try to kind of put your right hand, uh, you can do it yourself. Um, you know, if you do the right hand rule, uh, place your finger along the, 
yeah, sorry, in the video, it's not going to come out right anyway. So let me not do that. Uh, but yeah, use the component definition. And um, you do the same thing with the, the force and torque. Um, so you have to remember the definition of torque, which is that torque is defined as the displacement cross product with the force. So at this instant, really what matters is the displacement. So we are going to be using the same position vector here. And um, torque about the origin. Oh, so the force only has Y component. So I guess that's important so that uh, when you do R cross F, uh, these are still going to be zero because uh, of the non-existent G component. And uh, when you get to the G component here, so the G component of torque, um, it's going to be Rx Fy minus Ry Fx and uh, the non-existence X component of force makes this go away. So you're just dealing with this. So it's going to be 1.5 x component times the force, five. Uh, so that's two, uh, 7.5 uh, Newton meter. Let's see, 7.5 and it was positive. So it should be again, positive to direction. Yeah, I guess negative wasn't an option anyway. So yeah, it's, I think uh, there are a few questions like this on your, this homework set that tells you to, um, apply the, uh, the component definition of cross product.